Okay, so now we're going to do the graph of this quadratic, which is in standard form. And um, as with all quadratics, we can already state something concretely about it. We can say that the domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. We can observe here that the, the a, uh, if we want to think about it in terms of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the standard form, the a is 2. It's positive 2. So we can also already say that it opens up. Okay. And, um, and so now we have to begin with the work of actually calculating the rest of the points that are going to be of interest to us as we graph this quadratic. And again, I apologize that this video, that this uh, graphing this quadratic may be long, but I want you all to realize again, and we'll see in some of the practical examples, that not every problem will be this long. And also, um, I want you guys to see everything so you guys can learn effectively. So with that said, let's begin. So first, we're going to calculate the x-intercepts, okay? Now, again, to calculate the x-intercepts, we're going to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. And why is that true? Because every point on the x-axis has y component 0. Okay? So that means, in other words, that we're going to set y equal to 0 and we're going to solve for x. Okay, so I have this equation. So setting y equal to 0 means I'm going to solve the equation 0 equals 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. Okay. Again, we can use any technique we want to try and solve this to see if it has solutions. Um, we can try to factor it. We can try completing the square. We can try quadratic formula and so on and so forth. So to begin with, I'm going to try to factor it. Okay, so now, in order to, now I want you guys to notice something here. This one has this two out front. Okay, so that means that if I'm going to try to factor it, I need to take this into consideration, and I need to take this into consideration. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make the factors of two. Um, so in here it's only one times two. Okay, the factors of this two, and here I'm going to make the factors of negative twelve. So I could have. 1 times 12, where one of them is negative, let's say 1 times negative 12, negative 1 times 12, um, I could have 2 times negative 6, negative 2 times positive 6, I could have 3 times negative 4, uh, negative 3 times 4, and I believe that's basically all my possibilities, okay? And so what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to figure out um, which combination of these factors and these factors will form a factorization, if possible, uh, that leaves this as our middle term. So, for example, let's say I try this roots with these numbers. So, for example, here, I could have x plus 1 times 2x minus 12. Okay? Now, if I FOIL this out, I'm going to... For first of all, I'll get 2x squared, which is exactly what we expect for the uh, for the leading term. I'll get negative 12, because 1 times negative 12, I'll get negative 12 as my constant term, so that's taken care of. And of course, you can see that with this table, that's exactly the point, right? If I use these numbers to multiply to get the, if I use these numbers in the first space of the factors, and if I use these numbers in the second uh, space of my factors, I will always match the constant term and the leading term, right? But the question is the middle term. Now here, if I look at this one, I'm going to have negative 12 plus 2, which will be negative 10x. So we can see that's not going to work. Now what if I were to flip it the other way around? x minus 12, 12x plus 1. Okay, so that would be x minus 144x, that's going to be negative 143x. That's not going to be the factorization of this one. Now, by the same token, you can kind of see that if I do that here, if, if I were to write that out for this one, right, I'll have this situation. Okay. So, 
if I do minus plus and then plus minus, I'll end up with a similar situation. Plus 12x minus 2x, that's plus 10x in the middle. Minus x plus 144x plus 143x in the middle, right? So that's not going to work, okay? So we know already that neither of these rows are going to give us a factorization, okay? What about this? What about this ones here? Okay? So let me try this one. So x plus 2, 2x two minus 6, okay? I'm using this row here, okay? So I'll get 2x squared minus 6x, this x with that, plus 4x minus 12. Okay? Ah, look at this. 2x squared minus 2x minus 12. So now look at that. I factored it. This is the factorization. Okay? So now we don't need this table anymore because we've already found the factorization. Now, in order to then use this to find the zeros, I'm going to use the zero product property, okay? Okay. So let's say that, it, so if this, fact, if this is the factorization, then if that equals to zero, then by the zero product property, either this one is equal to zero or this one is equal to zero. So let's do that. So x plus 2 equals 0, or 2x minus 6 equals 0, okay? So now if I look at this one, I can say, okay, minus 2, minus 2, and I get x equals negative 2. If I look at this one, I can add 6, add 6, I get 2x equals 6, I divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 3. Okay, so now if you look at this, you can say, aha, I've got my two x-intercepts. Um, negative two, comma, and three. Okay. Now, strictly speaking, we could move on, but I, I don't want to miss the opportunity here to point out something else we could have done. In this particular case, if you all notice, the, each of the coefficients of this quadratic um, is divisible by 2. So I could have factored out the 2. I could have written this as 0 equals 2. And then I know 2 times 1 is 2. So this one is just x squared. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2x. So negative x. Or rather, if you notice, 2 times x squared will be 2x squared. 2 times negative x will be negative 2x. And then minus 6. It would be like this, right? So if you multiply this 2, in here you'll get the negative 12, the negative 2x, and the 2x squared. And then we could have factored this one. Now, of course, it's not always possible to factor out the a number from each term. But when that's possible, it, uh, it will. it's a great simplifier. So now here, let's. Uh, I'm going to factor this one for obvious reasons as just another practice of how we can factor uh, binomials and stuff like that. Okay, so let's do that here. I'm going to factor the x squared minus the x minus the 6. Okay, so I ask myself, what two numbers multiply to give me negative 6? Well, so for this one, it's a shorter list. It's 1 times 6, where one of them is negative or 2 times 3, again, where one of them is negative. So now I can start playing around. What are my possibilities? x plus 1, x minus 6, okay? x times x is x squared. x times negative 6 is minus 6x six plus x, because the 1 times x, and then 1 times negative 6 is minus 6. You can see that if I take the negative 6x plus x, that's going to be negative 5x. It won't be the negative x we're looking for here, right? So we know this is not the factorization. What if I switch the signs here? So what if it's um, minus 1 plus 6? 
then it'll be plus 6x in the middle, minus x, which will be plus 5x. So we know this one's gone. Now I'm going to use this one. x plus 2 times x minus 3. Let's look at this one. So x times x is x squared. x times minus 3 is minus 3x plus 2x here, and then minus 6. Negative 3x plus 2x, aha, that's the minus x. So this is the factorization, x squared minus x minus 6. By, f by, uh, by, this, by multiplying it out, I get this expression, so I know that this is, in fact, my factorization. So now check this out. The beautiful thing about this is that I can now rewrite this equation as 0 equals 2 times the factorization of this, which is x plus 2 times x minus 3, okay? And once here, we can again use the zero product property. Here we have 2 times this number, whatever it is, x plus 2, times this number, whatever it is, the x minus 3. Now the 2 can never be 0. The 2 can never be 0. So if this product is 0, then either the x plus 2 is 0, or the x minus 3 is equal to 0. And of course, you can see if I add 2, if I subtract 2 to the other side, I get the negative 2. And if I add 3 to the other side, I get a positive 3. And so this will give us the same x-intercepts, OK? And in fact, uh, and in fact, um, yeah, and we'll, we'll leave it like that. But I just couldn't help, but I wanted to show you this uh, as another practice of how we factor. Um, and uh, so you guys can see how this technique is done and just more practice. Anyway, so let's continue on. We've got our x-intercepts. Now, let us find our y-intercepts, okay? Okay. Now, to find our y-intercepts, we set x equal to 0, and we solve for y. Now, why is that the case? Because if we think about our y-axis, our y-axis goes uh, is the line x equals 0, right? It's the vertical line that goes through x equals 0. OK, OK. So I set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So this is my equation of the, of the quadratic. So it's going to be y equals 2 times 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 12. Now, we know that. 0 squared is going to be 0. 2 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. 2 times 0 is 0, so that's gone. Minus 12. So it's 0 minus 0 minus 12. So this gives us negative 12. So we know that our y-intercept, I should say y-intercept, singular, is negative 12. Right? Let me see here. Da -da 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 -da. OK, perfect. And now we're going to calculate the verdicts. So here, we recall that for a quadratic in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, the x-coordinate of the vertex, which, which, we may, which we're going to denote as x-vertex, may be given by the following formula. x-vertex equals negative b over 2a. x-vertex equals negative b over 2a. If you want, you should put this in a box in your notebook or an index card or whatever, because this is something that you want to know by heart. We recall that the vertex of a quadratic is important because it's the location of the maximum or minimum of the quadratic, depending on whether it opens up or down. If it opens up, it's the minimum. And if it opens down, it's the maximum. Um, it, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the location of the axis of symmetry. Um, so this is like, yeah, this is one of the main uh, formulas of calculating with quadratics. So with that being said, let us proceed to calculate the vertex here. So we're going to calculate the vertex. In our case, we can tell that our b is equal to negative 2 and our a is equal to positive 2. So we can use our formula. Our x of our vertex is equal to negative b over 2a, which is going to be negative of negative 2 divided by 2 times 2 
negative and negative is positive 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And we know that that simplifies to 1 half. Okay. So we have our x coordinate of our vertex. How do we calculate the y coordinate of our vertex? Well, just like any other point on the graph, if we know the x coordinate, we plug in the x coordinate to get the y coordinate. So our y of our vertex is going to be 2 times 1 half squared minus 2 times 1 half minus 12. Now, what is 1 half squared? Well, okay, so it's going to be 2 times 1 half times 1 half minus 2 times 1 half. Let me write this as 2 over 1 minus, and let's call this uh, 12, okay? So now here, how do we multiply fractions? We multiply them across. So let me actually write this as 2 over 1. We know that any whole number can be written as a fraction by setting it over 1. So now here, 2 over 1 times 1 half times 1 half will be 2 times 1 times 1, which will be 2 on top. 1 times 2 is 2 times 2 is 4 on the bottom. Here it's going to be minus. 2 times 1 is 2. 1 times 2 is 2. And then here uh, is going to be minus. Let's call this two, um, and this is going to be 12. Okay. And so now I'm going to continue this calculation over here a little bit. I'm trying to show this calculation in more explicit detail so that you guys can see how it's done and so you guys have no doubt whatsoever about how it's done. Okay. So I'm going to bring this calculation up here and it's going to be 2 over 4 minus 2 over 2. And in fact, uh, I'm going to put a space there. You're going to see why in a moment. Minus 12 over 1. And again, I'm going to put a space there as well. The space I'm leaving there is so that I can insert a fraction, which will have the same numerator and denominator, but which will be such that the denominators of the fractions that I have there will all have common denominator of, in our case, 4. I can see that 2 times 2 is 4, so I'm going to put 2 here and 2 here. I can see that 1 times 4 is 4, so I'm going to put a 4 here and a 4 here. The advantage is that once I get them all in the same denominator, I will be able to effectuate the subtraction. And we need that to calculate the vertex, the y coordinate of the vertex. So here this will become 2 over 4 minus 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4. Here minus 12 times 4 is 48, 1 times 4 is 4. So this is going to be 2 fourths minus 4 over 4. That's going to be negative 2 over 4 minus 48 over 4, which is actually going to become negative 50 over 4. And then if we want, we can uh, simplify that out. Um, negative, so this will actually become, I'm going to, let me, let me write it down first here as a fraction, and then we'll simplify it over here in a little bit. So 1 half and negative 50 over 4. Let's divide the top and bottom by 2, so negative 25 over 2. Okay. So for example, when we're graphing it, we're going to have to kind of figure out what 25 over 2 is, right? So let me do that here. I'm going to calculate 2 goes into 25, okay? 2 goes into 2 ones. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. I bring down my 5. 2 goes into 5 twice. 2 times 2 is 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. There's nothing else to bring down, so this is where I stop. Right? So 25 over 2 can be seen as 12 and 1 half. Okay? Perfect. And of course, if you wanted to, I could, like, we could do the decimal expansion, right? Okay. So we're going to need that, the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that goes through the x vertex 
So all vertical lines are written as x equal to some constant, and in this case that constant will have to be 1 half, the x coordinate of the vertex. Now here, we agreed already that this quadratic opens up, so this vertex y value will represent the minimum achieved by the quadratic, and we can see that it actually is achieved by the quadratic, so we can see that our range is going to be from negative 25 over 2 all the way to infinity. Okay. Okay, that's great. So now we have all the points necessary for us to graph this quadratic, okay? The x-intercepts are negative 2 and 3. Our y-intercept is negative 12. Um, so what we're going to do here to, to hold these points in a nice part of the graph is I'm going to graph the x-axis here so I can put in a long piece on the y-axis. This is my y-axis, this is my x-axis. So let's say 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, and then 3. And then here, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? So this is negative 12 right here. Let me see, it's going to be one half, so, okay, so let me do it over here, negative 12. I'm labeling the negative 12 on this side because I can see that it's going to cross here, but then at one half right here, it's going to be at uh, 12 and a half, so it'll be down here. And then, uh, by s well, and then we're going to talk about it right now, but by symmetry right here, it's going to be back at 12 again. Okay, I'll explain what I mean by symmetry there in a moment. Our our x-intercepts are at negative 2 and at positive 3. And that's basically it. And so now we just have to uh, uh, draw the lines connecting these. Or not the lines, but the curve thing that looks like it. Let me see if I can pull this. Oh my god, I almost, it, it almost came out nice. But, yeah. Okay, now, okay. So now I want to make a brief point about um, what I meant by, by symmetry. Over here, the vertical line that goes through x equals 1 half, the axis of symmetry, looks like this, right? And, well, obviously, in the ideal world, it would be a perfectly straight line that goes through the vertex. Now, it's not part of the graph, but it's important because the important thing about a quadratic is that whatever point on this side, you can flip over to whatever point on this side of the parabola, like let's say this point here, if you take that y value and that distance from the, from the axis of symmetry, if you go on the other side of the axis, uh, axis of symmetry, that same distance, you will get a point on the parabola at that, uh, at that y value. So here, I knew that my y-intercept was at negative 12. And I know that that's one half away from my axis of symmetry because um, because my axis of symmetry is located at x equals one half. So therefore, this other point I drew here, which is one half to the right, I know it has to have y value negative 12 and it has to have x, x value one because that's one half away. So that's how I was able to draw it, okay? And we can show, in fact, that that point, um, which is um, this point, which is going to be 1 comma negative 12, is on the graph. Okay? So let's look at that here. If I take x equals 1, 1 squared is 1. Squared is one so 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 would be 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Minus 12 is negative 12. So we just verified that that point is in fact in the graph. We didn't calculate it explicitly ahead of time as we did for the other points that I listed on the graph, but we were able to get that point because we exploited the, the, symmetri the symmetry property of the parabola. The parabola, of course, being the name of all the graphs of quadratics. And that is to say, what is the symmetry property for any y value? So let's say I'm going to draw this in in red. Okay. Let's say that this line is perfectly horizontal. Then what the symmetry property 
of a quadratic, of a parabola is, is that the distance from the axis of symmetry to this intersection point at this y is the same as the distance from, th from the axis of symmetry to this point on the parabola at that y value. And so if I have a point on this side, as I did here, the y-intercept, I can reflect it on the other side to find a point that I don't know exists. Okay? Well, I know it exists, but I can find that point without having to go through the explicit calculation because of the symmetry property of the axis of symmetry. Anyway, I hope that you all have enjoyed that problem, and, um, and we'll continue with some more. By the way, if you guys want to, by the way, if you guys want to, you guys can try and calculate the x-intercepts using completing the square, the quadratic formula, to further beef up your, um, your technique. Thank you.